Good morning, Lulatin Baptist. Welcome to our Sunday morning Bible study. And uh, grace to you and peace to each and every one of you. I want to invite you to take your Bible with me and look with me in Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. Ecclesiastes 3. Ecclesiastes is in the Old Testament, kind of in the middle of the Bible. It's right after the book of Psalms. Right after the book of Proverbs, we find Ecclesiastes. While you're finding your place there in the Bible, I'd also like to encourage you to get you a notepad and pen ready to take some notes. And I'm excited and looking forward to sharing this message with you this morning. While you're getting your things together and finding your place in the Bible, I do want to mention a few important items to you. Um, the uh, Lulatin Baptist Ministry Team. By that, I'm referring to your pastor to uh, Brother Tim, our church deacon, Miss Linda, our, our church clerk, Brother Terry, our church treasurer. Uh, we've been praying together. We've been communicating quite a bit with each other. I just shared with him in the last 24 hours uh, that, that I asked for their opinion. I shared with him my heart saying that I feel like we ought to hold off on having any kind of gatherings together, like maybe a drive-in service I suggested to them that we ought to think about holding off on having any kind of service like that through the month of April. And here's why. Um, according to the news reports and the doctors and, and those in authority, they believe that April may be the most challenging month for not just our country, but for our state as far as the spread of COVID-19 is concerned. So with that thought in mind, I just suggested to our, our ministry team that we hold off on making any plans for our church to gather together until at least the end of April and see where we are at at that time and look for God's direction. And I want to just share with you that our ministry team was in complete agreement with that idea. I certainly appreciate Brother Tim, Miss Linda, Brother Terry and their support. I appreciate when they... When, they, when something's on their heart, they let me know, and I also appreciate when they are uh, in agreement, they are, are good about communicating with me. So church family, Lord willing, unless something changes for the better, and thank God it could, Lord willing, we'll just uh, plan on having these videos on Facebook and YouTube uh, at least through the month of April. I would like to encourage our ladies to make plans to join us this evening, Sunday evening, at 7 o'clock on Facebook and YouTube for another edition of Questions with Miss Ann. She's got several good questions to respond to this week, and I hope you'll make every effort to join us for that program. Then uh, please be praying with me about the idea of us doing another video each week for the children. I've been considering the idea and praying about using the flannel graph figures like we usually do on a Sunday morning service to uh, teach a, chil a children's Bible story. And we hope to have that up and running in the very near future. I covet your prayers that the Lord will give me direction and wisdom in that plan. And then finally, before we get in the message, I want to say a thank you to our church family and to the friends of Lulatin Baptist. Many of you over the last two or three weeks have called and checked on us and talked to us and wanted to know how my wife and I and our family are doing, how Miss Ann's doing, and I'm happy to report all is well. God's been good. Thank you so much for your concern. It's a blessing and an honor to be your pastor. And one more word of thanks. I want to say thanks to all of our church family and to the friends of Lulatin who have been supporting us financially. You've been sending in your tithe checks, your love offerings, your financial gifts, and thank you so much in Jesus' name for doing so. May God bless you, and I know He will. God bless you as you pray for this ministry and as you support it with your finances. Well, we're in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. If you will, follow along with me, verses 1 through 8. And I want to share a message with you this morning entitled, It's Time. It's Time. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. The Bible says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, 
and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Now may we pray before the message. Heavenly Father, we want to say good morning to you. And on this new Lord's Day, we give praise to Almighty God. We praise you for your goodness and for your wonderful works to the children of men. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your dear Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. Thank you for his presence here with us this morning. Thank you, God, for allowing us to own a copy of the Scriptures. Please help us to read our Bibles every day and show us Lord, make your word real to us every day. Give us a heart to be Bible strong. Please show us what we should glean from today's message. Lord, we pray for healing on our land. And I ask for your blessing on our people. Lord, give them grace today. Forgive us of our sins and please move us toward Jesus. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, the book of Ecclesiastes was written by wise King Solomon. And when we read his words, I think he knew what he was talking about, don't you? More importantly, we know this, that the words of Solomon, they were inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. And God's Spirit directed this man what to write in these messages. And so when Solomon writes here in Ecclesiastes, it's wise for us to take heed and to embrace what he says. Notice with me, just by way of introduction, look there and again in verse 1 of chapter 3, it says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. When I see Solomon using the words season and time, there's something encouraging in that to me. Because I know through experience, I know this. One thing that seasons and time have in common is that seasons and time change. Seasons change. Times change. To me, that's encouraging right now because our nation and our state, our families, our church is going through a tough time. But let's remember today, God is good and by His grace, seasons and times change always change. Secondly, if you'll notice this with me, in verse 4, Solomon writes, there is a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. He makes it clear that life is filled with times of weeping, times of sorrow, times of difficulty. But that one verse also makes it clear that Things do change for the better. The time of weeping will come to a time of laughing. And the time of mourning will eventually change over to a time of dance. Isn't that a wonderful thought? When I look at these uh, verses, uh, number 5 gets my attention. At the beginning of verse 5 it says, A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. And then look at the second half of that verse. Solomon writes, there is a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Isn't that amazing? That sounds like social distancing. When he says there is a time to refrain from embracing, we're in a season right now where we're supposed to say, stay six feet away from each other. 
and we shouldn't be shaking hands or giving hugs. It's a time to refrain from embracing, like Solomon writes here 3,000 years ago. I'm looking forward to that time, church family, when we can embrace again. Amen, aren't you? What I really like as well about these eight verses, and these first eight verses in chapter 3, is, is what Solomon does not say in his text. Solomon never says, there is a time to panic. He never says there is a time to be afraid. And in these verses, he never says there is a time to quit on God. May God help you and me to remember that. Now to get to the heart of the message, I am reminded of a, a well-known ring announcer for the UFC uh, fighting sport. The ring announcer, his name is Bruce Buffer. And always before the main event, this ring announcer, Bruce Buffer, he's known for standing in the middle of the ring and announcing these two words. It's time! When he says that, usually the crowd always goes crazy and goes wild and gets excited because they know that the main event the big fight that they've been waiting for, the, the great activity is about to take place. And friends, I just for a few moments, I want to share with you that as we look at this passage in Ecclesiastes and throughout the scriptures, we need to remember it's time for some things. It's time for you to do the following, and I hope you'll write these down, friend. Number one, it's time for you to prepare for eternity. You see, back there in our text again, chapter 3 and verse 2, Solomon says, There is a time to be born and a time to die. A little bit later in the book, in chapter 9 and verse 5, Solomon says, Under the direction of the Holy Spirit of God, he says, For the living know that they shall die. The living know that they shall die. We know it's coming. We just don't know when. A few books later in the Old Testament, a great prophet by the name of Amos, he wrote these words. In Amos chapter 4 and verse 12, he wrote, Prepare to meet thy God. Because, see, friend, the Bible clearly teaches that when our physical body dies, the next step, the next experience for us is we enter into something called eternity. And the scriptures say the dead will stand before God. And the scriptures encourage us, encourage you and encourage me to prepare for eternity. Now friend, I know that talking about death, that's a morbid subject. It's not a real positive uh, topic to consider. But I want to share this with you in love. Promise me that you will never die, and I'll never mention it again. Also, please remember this thought. Here's a, a principle from the Bible. We're really not ready to live until we're first ready to die. I want to encourage you and me. Let's be prepared for eternity. Remember this. The Bible talks much about death. And in the Bible, death always refers to a separation. According to God's good book, when a person's physical body dies, their soul and their spirit separate from their body. And that person's soul and spirit is either headed for heaven or for hell. It all depends on what that individual did with Christ while they were living here on earth. I want to remind you of some stories, just real briefly, of, of some incidents in the Bible of what happened when people died. For instance, do you remember when Jesus was hanging on the cross and one thief next to him just blasphemed the Lord and, and talked ugly and mocked the Lord? But the other thief turned to the Lord and, and said, Lord, would you please remember me when you come into your kingdom? 
Jesus looked at that man, knowing that that was the day of their death. Jesus looked at that repentant thief, and he said, Today you will be with me in paradise. The Apostle Paul, a Christian, a, a, a man of God, he said that for the Christian, when we die, we are absent from the body and present with the Lord. When we, when we experience death, we go to be with Christ. And that's a wonderful truth. There's a very negative side to it as well. Jesus told the story of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man died without knowing God. The rich man died without Christ. Jesus said that rich man, when he died, he lifted up his eyes in hell, being in torments. You see, when we talk about getting saved, what we mean is the Bible teaches we are to get saved from our sins so that we can be made right with God. And we want to get saved from the punishment of our sins, which is hell, so that we can go to heaven. I want to encourage you to make that decision to say yes to Jesus Christ today. You know why I want to encourage you to do it today? It's because God doesn't promise you tonight. I remember as a child I was under conviction. I had heard the story of Christ being the Savior, that He died on the cross for our sins, that He was buried, He rose again the third day, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, saved from your sins, saved from... Uh, the wrath to come, saved from hell. And I remember thinking, I know that's what God wants me to do, but I just kept putting it off. I was rebellious, making excuses. And yet, one night, as I was in my mind considering my options and considering what the Bible has to say about sin and hell and Jesus and heaven, one of my older brothers, David, he looked at me and he asked me the perfect question. He said, Steve, isn't it time that you got saved? And as soon as he said that, I just broke down in tears. I had no more excuses. And that night as a child, I called on the Lord and asked him to save me. According to the Bible, that prepared me for eternity. Now I know that when I die, I will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Do you know that? My friend, if you are unsure about your eternity, I want to encourage you to take the heart. Solomon said, there's a time to be born, there's a time to die. It's coming. It is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment, the Bible says. Make sure that you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Make sure that you've been saved the Bible way. It's time for you and me to prepare for eternity. Secondly, for us Christians, I want to encourage you to remember this. It is time to pray. It is time to pray. Friends, if you haven't been praying about this pandemic lately, I want to encourage you to let the month of April be a time to pray. When you read the news reports or listen to the, <clears throat> the uh, television news, and I encourage you not to do that too often. I try to spend maybe 10 or 15 minutes on it each day, and you get the picture real quick as to what's happening. But the predictions are, unless God intervenes, and I, I believe He could if He wants to, but the predictions are that April may be the very most difficult month for our nation uh, through this COVID-19 experience. We need to be praying. I want to remind you of, if you hold your place here in Ecclesiastes, and there's the story of Jonah. Remember when he wound up in the belly of the whale? Um, he was in isolation. He was in a situation that was beyond his control. But listen to what he did. In Jonah chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Jonah was going through a trial. Jonah was experiencing something that he had never experienced before. Does that sound familiar? And what did Jonah do? The Bible says he prayed. 
People of God, I want to encourage you to join me in prayer. Ask God's Spirit to show you what to be praying during this time. Ask God to forgive us of sin. We want to make sure that there is no sin between us and the Savior as this disease spreads. Ask God to teach us through this trial. There is something He wants you and me to learn about ourselves in the midst of this trial. There is something that God wants you and me to learn about Himself during this trial. Lord, Your Holy Spirit is our teacher. Please help us to be good students, to take good notes, and to learn well. I want to encourage you to consider this prayer. You don't have to turn there, but in Habakkuk, the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3 and verse 2, the prophet called out this prayer to God. He said, In wrath, remember mercy. I truly believe, without a doubt, that we, our nation, and this world is experiencing a season of God's wrath. O oh Lord, in wrath, remember mercy. You know what mercy is? Mercy is when God does not give us what we deserve. That's mercy. It's time for us to prepare for eternity. It's time to pray. Thirdly, I want to remind you about this. It's time to plant. It's time to plant. And I'm not talking about a physical garden, although that may not be a bad idea right now. But in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 2, again, the preacher writes, There's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. There is a time to plant. And I want to encourage you, Christian friend, let this be a season in which you and I plant seeds of kindness, seeds of help. Look around to your neighbors, your family members, maybe a loved one you haven't talked to in a long time, maybe a, ne a neighbor that you haven't had any kind of uh, communication with in quite a while. Ask God to show you how to plant seeds of kindness and seeds of help in the lives of other people. Ask God to show you how to be a blessing to your church family. Ask God to show you how to be a blessing to God then I want to also encourage you, Christian friend, let this be a time to plant seeds of truth in the lives of other people. Look for an opportunity to share Scripture with lost sinners, with those who are weary, with those who are fearful. A time to prepare for eternity, a time to pray, a time to plant. And then finally, I want to share with you this is a time for you and me to praise. It's a time to praise the Lord. Do you remember back there in Jonah how it says at the beginning of Jonah chapter 2 and in verse 1 it says that Jonah prayed to the Lord out of the whale's belly. But look at the end of the chapter. Chapter 2 of Jonah is only 10 verses long. Look what Jonah was doing by Verse 9, Jonah chapter 2 and verse 9, he's talking to the Lord. He says, But I will sacrifice unto you, God, with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. You know what he's basically doing? He's, he's praising the Lord. He's giving thanks to God. He says, God, I'm going to praise you. You know what's amazing? At the end of chapter, I'm sorry, at the beginning of chapter 2 in verse 1, Jonah is praying. By verse 9, he's praising the Lord, even while he is still in the fish's belly. But then in the very next verse, verse 10, it says, The Lord caused the fish to vomit Jonah up on the seashore. Do you see the pattern there? In the time of difficulty, God's man was praying. Then he went to praise. Then God got him out of the jam. God brought deliverance. Do you remember the story of Paul and Silas in the book of Acts? It's Acts chapter 16 and verse 25. I'll go ahead and read it to you just real quickly. They, uh, these two 
uh, men of God had been cast into prison for preaching Christ, for sharing the gospel. Acts 16.25 says this, And at midnight, Paul and Silas, they did two things. First of all, they prayed. And then, it says, they sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. It's a similar pattern to, see what, to what we see in Jonah chapter 2. There was a time of prayer, and then there was a time of praise. And then in the very next verse there at Acts 16, Acts 16, 26, suddenly there was a great earthquake, and immediately all the doors of the prison were opened. Again, God's people were praying, and then they started praising even in the midst of a jail cell. And then God opened the door of deliverance. Friend, let's go to prayer. Let's remember to praise. And I believe that as we do so with an open and sincere heart, God can get us out of this mess. I am reminded of Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18. And this will be the, the last scripture I share with you this morning. Habakkuk 3. 17 says this, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olives shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. If you look at that verse, Habakkuk 3.17, do you know what the prophet is describing there? He's saying that the food supply is running out. The crops aren't producing. There's no animals to be able to use for food. But look what he does in the very next verse. Habakkuk says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. As the food supply was running out, Habakkuk was loyal to God. And he said, I will joy in the Lord. I will rejoice in the Lord. Oh, friends, you know what I encourage you today? Let's make our homes a choir loft. We can't have a quote-unquote church service at the building we call Lulaton Baptist Church right now. There's going to be no choir there maybe for the rest of the month unless the Lord intervenes. But let's make our personal residences. Let's turn them into a house of prayer. Let's turn our, our homes into a choir loft. The Lord's been dealing in my heart about going outside the front yard or the backyard and just start singing. Sing unto the Lord. I want to encourage you to make your home a house of prayer, turn it into a choir loft, and watch how God responds. I want to thank you for taking the time. Thank you in Jesus' name for taking the time to watch this video. I'd like to have a word of prayer with you, then just a few closing uh, thoughts. Dear God, thank you for your good word. Lord, I pray for that person today who is not prepared to meet God. Please give them the understanding they need. Give them the desire, the courage, and the faith to say yes to the Lord Jesus today and to be saved the Bible way. Lord, help your people. Give us a heart for prayer in this time of difficulty. Give us a heart to plant. Plant seeds of kindness, seeds of help, seeds of truth in the lives of our grandchildren in the lives of our friends, neighbors. Please give us a heart to praise you through this storm. Thank you, Lord, for the promise of your word. All things work together for good to them that love God. Help us to, be, help us to love you, to be in that group that loves you today. And I thank you, Father, that the seasons and the times, they do change. A better day is coming because of our Savior, the good Lord Jesus Christ. And it's in His name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. I hope you'll join us tonight for questions with Miss Ann. Lord willing, right around the 7 o'clock time, ladies. I believe it will be a blessing to you. Keep us in your prayers. 
We're praying for you. Have a great day.